Anima, possibly the best Diablo clone out on mobile right now. I just heard that it's on iOS, so today I downloaded it, gave it a go, and we're gonna talk about it here, comparing it to Diablo Immortal. What is up my friends, my name is Echo, and like we said, we're gonna be checking out this game that so many of you in the comments section have been recommending for me to take a look at. Now, I did take a look at this game over on Android. It was actually being used on BlueStacks when I did that video, but I wanted to get the mobile feel. How does this game actually feel when playing it on my mobile device? And really, that's what we're focusing here on the channel, right? We wanna know how does every game play on mobile because this is a Diablo Immortal channel after all we're gonna be playing through this a little bit because we don't have Immortal yet now I have upgraded pretty nicely I'm gonna show you guys some of the upgrade progression some of the battle tech um, mechanisms and basically how the game works so you're gonna be running through these pretty deep dungeons you can go down very uh, very many dead ends where you're going in a direction you don't really know exactly uh, what's at the end as you can see i'll show you the map mechanic as soon as i'm taking taking care of these zombies as you see in the top right hand side there's a map if you click on that map it shows you on the screen where you're going and it's going to help you maneuver a little bit more easily through the map because Sometimes you're gonna get lost down the dead ends. Now I'm gonna show you that again when we progress a little bit further through this map itself. Now, as you guys can see, I'm playing with it in my hand, but I'm watching my screen as I'm recording it, just so I have a bigger view to look at. A uh, perk of being a content creator, I guess. Now you'll notice that my character is is uh, wielding a sword, but also has a shield in hand. You're able to adjust and change the things that you have. Now, if you come on over and click on the bottom, you'll see there are three buttons, and that center button is your gear you could check out all of these different pieces of gear and you can equip what you want they have different abilities different strengths some of them have slots as you could see or sockets my shield that i'm using right here it has a socket so i can put any type of gems inside of there which i have not yet unlocked so it's nice that you can customize your weapon loadout and uh, that's something you would kind of expect out of this game in this genre. There's some more armor that we're picking up, armor added to my, uh, my little satchel, my backpack. And we're just gonna continuously go through. Now, something that I have to say, I probably played this game for 40 to 45 minutes. And there was nothing that was like, extravagant we're looking at a game here that looks like an old version of diablo not something that we're going to expect out of diablo immortal which is going to be intense graphics intense abilities like the game is next level next generation stuff something you probably have never played before on mobile i could tell you that firsthand because of course i have played it at blizzcon 2019 so we're not going to get that from this game. We're not going to get that, uh, you know, that extravagant gameplay, flashy stuff, or really insane controls. Now, behind me, you will notice that I, uh, the, well, let, me, let me get myself out of the way for a second. As you can see behind me, there are three sockets for attack, and there is the regular attack button. The attack button can't be spammed too much. You have to wait for it to be moved. Uh, to completely fill itself up before you attack again. In addition, the control stick is on the other side of the screen, which you can see uh, just moving around with my thumb. Pretty easy, basic, and standard mechanics for this genre. All right, back in the screen. Feels better, feels more natural. And notice we are to a dead end right here. That's typically what we're gonna find down many of these paths. But we're gonna continue walking around. I'm gonna be talking about monetization of this game. Do I think it does it well, or do I think it uh, is a bit spammy? We'll, we'll talk about that soon. Now let's hit the map again, and you'll see on the screen, you can see where I've gone. Everything becomes uh, non-invisible. It's no longer a secret so let's go over here i noticed there's some unexplored areas over here we're going to come on down and i'm going to see and a lot of times these lead to other pathways or just more depth into the into the uh into the map and uh, enemies continue spawning uh, a gripe that i have now i am like i said maybe you know not even an hour into the game one gripe that i have is the enemies are all basically the same you're not getting any type of variety with the enemies that you're attacking it's all either going to be imps or zombies and those are some imps right there they're a faster attacker yet they're easier to take down now we want to grab that gold let's get rid of that off the screen or you're going to get the zombies which take a little bit more hits and uh you know they're slower though 
So again, we went down a dead end, but I am a player who likes to explore every corner of the map. Let me know in the comments section below if you are one of those players as well. And also guys, if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. We are comparing many different games to Diablo Immortal. We're making predictions on the release of Immortal and when Immortal does release, I'm gonna be putting out videos for it every single day. So you're gonna to wanna to be here at that point in time if you're a fan of this genre action RPGs on mobile, specifically Diablo Immortal. So this is different than most of the videos I've been putting out on my channel. Typically, I'll record the gameplay ahead of time, and then I will do all the uh, the discussion and everything over that, which is giving it gives me a little bit more focus and direction when I'm trying to talk. But I kind of like doing this as well, mixing this type of gameplay in because it's you know natural and it's kind of in the moment experience feels. Notice we're going to get another one of these barrels right here. Oftentimes they contain weapons, armor, or gold. And those are going to be important. I'm going to show you guys in a moment how you could check out what's going on in the main village, which is basically where you can get upgrades, you can you can craft stuff, you can sell stuff, you can repair stuff, and all of that. But first I wanted to get you through the dungeon. So about one more minute in this dungeon, and uh, we'll then move on. Now, what game do you think this resembles the most? I mean, if you're watching this, you're possibly a... Ooh, my bag is full. Hmm, quilted armor and a wooden shield. It looks like none of that matters. So when things become full, I obviously can't bring anything more around with me. So I'm going to want to head back to my little uh, my little compound, and we're going to want to un undo the bags, sell some stuff, and we're going to go do that right now. And if you guys could check it out, uh, right above me, there is that circle right underneath the map. If we click on that circle, it's going to teleport me back to my compound and here we have uh the fortress of the order we have a whole bunch of stuff going on we have the captain they're guarding that right here but we have more stuff we can come over here to hedwig and if we open that up this is where we can do some recycling removing sockets repairing stuff let's repair all make sure that everything that we have is at its strongest and can we sell things um, hmm, I don't know that I've sold anything yet in this game, but also notice the points section right here. I have zero points, but you can upgrade four different areas of your character. Strength, dexterity, in intellect, and vitality. You could only equip certain weapons when you have the, uh, the requirements for that weapon unlocked. So if you don't have enough strength, you won't be able to use a particular weapon, uh, vice versa with any of the other areas of the game. We're gonna hit the X, we're gonna move our way around to the next area, and over here, we have Olaf, and we're gonna do some trading, and look, we can get more weapons. These things are going to be, uh, well, they're different than what I have in my arsenal right here, but can I trade? We can sell a whole lot here, so let's go ahead and sell all of the swords that are not as good as mine. So my sword is a 32, this is a 28, so let's see, we're gonna sell everything that's basically trash. And um, how do we do this? Let me figure this out. It looks like just hitting the sell all button, as long as you're sure that everything that you have in there is lower level or not needed, you could sell it all in one shot, which is pretty darn sweet. Now let's see here, we have other weapons. Let's see, it shows you how much it costs to buy it. It shows you the damage, endurance, and regen. And um, does it show you the requirements? Yes, as you can see, it says strength 20. I only have strength level five right now, so I wouldn't be able to use this weapon. Now. It's also worth noting, I didn't mention this, in the beginning of the game, you could choose between three classes. Basically, a barbarian type character, a melee character, which I'm using. You could use a wizard, or you could go ahead and use an archer character. So two ranged characters and one melee. Here is your stash. You could put everything into your stash if you don't want to carry it around in your bag anymore. And I mean, does this stuff kind of look familiar to you guys? It's stuff similar to what we were seeing in, uh, in the Diablo games on PC. We're gonna continue walking around and look for more areas of this map. We have our guys camping out by the fire, roasting marshmallows and getting some heat, some warmth. And what do we have here? Retiol. Now these are the black, this is the black market where you can purchase chests. And if you notice, I do have one chest hiding right here. I've not opened it yet. I have to figure out how to open that and we can open it together here, see if it's worthwhile. But you also have things like the uh, infused core. It's a material, legendary material, uh, tier four. And it's going to, when the essence merges, the whole becomes the one and the one becomes everything.
So it looks like we have a little bit of riddles within this as well. Um, so we're not going to buy anything from there yet. I just wanted to show you what this all looks like. But let's talk about monetization. How is this game monetized? And how do we think this monetization plan is good or bad? Or are you indifferent about it for Immortal? On the top of the screen, you'll notice there are three tabs. That third tab is a Wheel of Fortune. And as you can see, if you watch some ads, you could spin the wheel. It's how they implement their their ad revenue into the game. Totally optional, nothing spams up on the screen. And if you don't wanna do that because you don't wanna watch ads while you're playing your game, totally cool, you can ignore that tab and it will never throw a pop-up at you. In all the time I've been playing, I've never seen a pop-up or something asking me to buy, purchase, or watch something, which is really nice. The options are there, they're just not thrown at you, which is really nice. Now we're gonna come on in to Gift of the Demons, and as you can see right here, we have some other options for purchases. On top, we have the item store, and inside of here, you could purchase keys. You could purchase a whole bunch of different things, and uh, well, the purchase price are right there but again this is optional stuff if you want to go through the game we have cosmetic things such as the wings you know Diablo loves their wings guys and if you want to rock a pair of wings you can buy them right here I personally like those uh, 199 ones over there the uh, adorn your hero with a pair of unique wings well it looks like it says that on every single one but the one all the way over on the left I like that one the best Familiar Emporium is going to allow you to summon demons to battle and get rewards. That's not a pay-to-win element at all. But underneath, we have a treasury where you can obviously buy gold, which gold is going to help you upgrade and purchase things later on in the game. You could purchase those for real money. And looking at the prices of these things, nothing seems excessively expensive or overcharged. Everything looks pretty fair, pretty inexpensive, actually. It uh, doesn't look so bad. And it looks like we have one more thing, three additional character slots. $1.99 may not actually be a bad investment if you really spend a lot of time in the game. The leftmost tab up top is our achievement tab where you can gain achievement and rewards just for playing through the game. There are a ton of them. There's two tabs of them. And I think I've only collected a few along the way. But notice there's just a ton of rewards that you can have and these are all for free. And on the bottom left, you see that flashing button. That is going to be your skill tree, which does not have a ton of depth. Notice I have two abilities right there, two ability points that I can spend. And we have the three trees for our different characters. We have the barbarian melee character, the wizard character, and the archer character. So if we come up here, and if I want to spend those points, I don't know if I... Let's see if I could... There we go. We got that spent right here. And I'm going to see. Nope. It looks like I got to upgrade this a little bit more so we can get two points inside of that first skill, which is going to be Bash. It's active right now. Going back through the teleport that we just came from puts you right back in the same pot spot in the game that you were in. And I have to tell you something that I like about this that I don't like about PC is I really don't love the click to move way that Diablo plays on PC. It's just never been natural to me as a player. So this giving me a joystick is something that I personally prefer. Again, I may be in the minority on this point, but it's just personally what I like. I like mobile controls. I'm a mobile gamer. I play the majority of my games on mobile. So I'm personally very comfortable with it. Now, obviously, someone that's coming to this game from console or PC, you may not be in that same boat and you're going to have some getting used to. But you could compare the same thing to when I was a, con a console gamer and switched over to a PC gamer. I played console for 10 years. Maybe a little less. And then I switched over to PC, got obsessed with Steam, and switched everything over to mouse and keyboard. It's very hard to play the same games you were playing on console, then on PC, utilizing mouse and keyboard. Although I could have probably plugged in a controller, I wanted that PC advantage. But it's the same thing here. If you play on console or if you play on PC, it's just getting used to a new control scheme, something different. Now, we talked about earlier how there's a lot of redundancy, at least, you know, at this point, the first hour into the game. Same enemies are popping out. It, you're not running into anything different. The colors of the game are pretty dull and bland, but it's because we're in, you know, a very dark, dungeony like place and we're looking at a style of game that is from many years past 
but it's done well. Things are smooth in this game. It's actually enjoyable to play, and it's something that I'll probably spend a little bit more time in playing a little bit more to see how the game progresses and possibly even bring you another video, maybe five to 10 hours into the game to see how things progress. Now we have something here that I have yet to see. Some type of a guard, shall we take him on? Yes, we got uh, Garnu the captain, and looks like I'm taking him down pretty good. He was not very hard to take down. Couple of shields, and we have a doorway to somewhere new. Let's see where we go right now. We have Garden 2. This looks nothing like a garden to me. Looks like we still have imps. Let's see if we still have zombies as well. Let's see if anything else changes now that we're a little bit further. We got that chest open. Okay. Looks like the same the same type enemies. Um, obviously, it's going to take less shots or less strikes to take down enemies when you put stronger weapons in your hand, when you start wielding stronger weapons. And I did that already. It made it imps being two shots to imps being one shot. And uh, I haven't seen much of a change since that. I have not found any stronger weapons since that time. Now, my shield is only a wooden shield. I anticipate getting much stronger things, but I'm, wa I'm rocking this shield because it has those slots where I could put some type of a uh, some type of a gem inside for some magical abilities, which should be cool. And uh, yeah, we're just going on through, guys. And I think I gave you guys a pretty good idea of what this game looks like, at least a first look at it, because again, I'm giving it a first look myself. Like I said earlier, there we go, leveling up to level four. That's what I'm talking about. Like I said earlier, I did put out another video comparing this game to Diablo Immortal probably about a month ago, as per popular request. A lot of people really do love this game. And then in the comment section, someone said this game is out on iOS now. So I downloaded it right away, and here we are making a video where I could give a little bit more of an analysis of the controls and how good they feel. And uh, I mean, we know what graphics are like on a game like this, guys. The gameplay is pretty fun. Things are a bit redundant. Colors are nothing crazy. Sound is decent, although I'm not sure if it's actually capturing the sound as I record this. I hope that it is, but I don't want to promise something. But the controls are pretty good, pretty natural, pretty intuitive. So I'm um, happy with that. At the end of the day, this is a fun game, one that can hold you over for a few months until Diablo Immortal does release. Remember, we are dealing with coronavirus madness, guys. I hope all of you are safe and your families are safe as well. And uh, it's probably slowing down, or I should actually say it's definitely slowing down the development of Diablo Immortal that has been uh, proven. So. We have to wait a little bit longer. In the meantime, try out this game. Let me know if you like it or not in the comments below. And if you are a veteran of this game, if you've been playing it for a while, let me know your thoughts and give me any tips in the uh, in the comment section. Because look, I'm new to the game here. I wanna play a little bit more and have some more fun with it. Tell me how to do that. But we're out of here for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you come back for more videos on the channel. Links to all the socials are in the description of this video. And uh, make sure you subscribe, guys, because I want you back here. Take care, guys and be good.